Hi, my name is Kevin Kessler. I'm one of the station hosts for the Stay Away Camporee that the Heart of Virginia Council is having this weekend. I was asked to go over how you could set up a compass course in your backyard or a local park, so we're going to do that in the next few minutes. When you do this for real, you'll need to have a pencil and paper to write down some information. You'll also need some compasses. I'm going to talk a little bit about base plate compasses next. There's several different types of base plate compasses that are used for orienteering. They all have a plexiglass uh, base on the bottom, but there's several different models that I'll describe here in some detail. This compass is a pretty old compass. It's 45 years old. It's actually the first compass I ever had when I was a scout. It has a lot of sentimental value and it still works great. Another type of compass made by Sunto. These are relatively inexpensive. This is a base plate compass. Uh, you can see it's got a nice wide base, rotating bezel. It's got a jeweled bearing inside. And these are about $15 online. A little more expensive, higher end compass, Brunton. This is a Brunton True Arc 10. This is an orienteering compass used for adventure racing. It's got information on here how to do latitude and longitude for UTM coordinates. It also has a needle that can be used anywhere on the planet, which is kind of nice. Maybe $30 to $40 for this one. Silva is another manufacturer. They make compasses. I like this one particularly because it has a, a mirror used for sighting. Also could be used in a survival situation to attract uh, people. This one also has a nice feature in that it floats. If you drop it in the water, it's right there on the surface. You can reach down and grab it. I take this with me when I go canoeing a lot. But my favorite compass for orienteering is this base plate compass, the Sunto A30. It has a lot of good features on it. It's got a luminescent dial so you can read it at night. It has a magnifying glass which makes it nice to look at things uh, that are small detail on a map. So let's go over how to use this particular compass before we start out on our course. A typical base plate compass has a plexiglass base plate. Along the edges you have a ruler and millimeters and inches. This is to describe a scale on the map. A magnifying glass, as I mentioned earlier, has these two cutouts. You can use a pen or pencil to circle objects on the map. Again, a luminescent dot at the end of the orienteering arrow, or the direction of travel arrow. And then this rotating bezel. This bezel is the most important part. You can see it's circled in degrees, has the cardinal directions on it of north, east, south, and west. Inside the bezel, there's this red arrow object. We're going to call that a shed because it makes a nice mnemonic device that is easy to remember uh, how to use a compass. The last item is the uh, magnetic north arrow pointing magnetic north. That's the red end, obviously. I have a lanyard here to keep it safe on your body. The best way to use that is to take it around your wrist, loop the compass through. That way, if you drop it, it's still hanging on your, on your wrist. So, how to use this compass? Uh, direction of travel arrow is the arrow you're always going to follow whenever you're orienting, orienteering. Um, that's the most important part of the compass. Point the direction of travel arrow at an object you want to navigate to, for example that tree. Now I'm going to rotate the bezel until the red is in the shed. When I do that, I can then read on the index line here, that's a bearing of 70 degrees. So to get to that pine tree, I would go on a bearing of 70 degrees. That's basically what, how we're going to go and navigate a course in my woodlot. We're going to plot four different courses that way. So again, you'd need a pencil and paper to write these down. Of course, you have to have a starting point. My starting point is going to be this sweet gum tree on my property. Uh, that would be my beginning point. My first point is going to be a pine tree. I'm going to take my compass, put my direction of travel arrow at that tree. I'm going to rotate my bezel until the red is in the shed. And I'm going to read the bearing on that to be 260 degrees right here at the index line. So I'd write down 260 for control point number one. Now I need a distance. My pace is about three feet, so I'm going to pace that off and then do the math on the other end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen steps. Seventeen times three is fifty-one, so this is fifty-one feet. So control point number one is 260 degrees, 51 feet. All right, so now we're going to go to control point number two, another tree on my woodlot. Again, I'm going to point my direction of travel arrow at that tree. I'm going to rotate the bezel until the red is in the shed. I'm going to read up here on my index line. It's 282 degrees. So now I need a distance. Again, I'm going to do a pace count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12, 13 steps. So 13 times 3 is 39 feet. So my second control point will be 282 degrees, 39 feet. My third control point is another tree. I'm going to point my direction of travel arrow at the tree. I'm going to rotate my bezel until the red is in the shed. Read my bearing at the index line. It's 186 degrees. Now I need to know the distance. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen steps. Thirteen steps. Again, thirteen times three is thirty-nine feet. So my third control point is 186 degrees, 39 feet. Let's do one more just to make sure you got this down. I'm gonna do one more tree on my property and this will be my end point. I'm gonna point my direction of travel arrow at that tree. I'm gonna rotate the bezel until the red is in the shed. I'm gonna read my index line. It is 294 degrees. Now I need to know my distance. So one, two, One steps times three is 63 feet. So that's the last control point, which is 293 degrees, 63 feet. You can continue on in this manner to make it as long as you want. I would encourage you to do at least five to maybe eight or nine different control points throughout your property or park. At the end, it'd be nice to have some little surprise there, maybe something attached to the tree or a little uh, tr trinket of some sort, just to make it kind of fun at the end. If you'd like more information on orienteering, you have several sources available to you. You have your scout handbook on chapter 11 talks about navigation. You also can Google online, I'm sure, and find many resources. You can look at the orienteering merit badge book. You also have an outreach group, Central Virginia Orienteering Club is a club in the Richmond area. I'm a member of that club. If you Google Central Virginia Orienteering Club, you can become a member through Meetup. We'll send you information on our upcoming events that we have monthly. We design the events to make them friendly for scouts. Uh, there's no admission fee for scouts if they're working on one of the requirements for first class or the merit badge. And if you need somebody to come and talk to your troop or patrol about orienteering, we offer that as well. I hope you enjoyed this little video on how to do an orienteering course. If you have more any questions, you can contact me, Kevin Kessler, through the Central Virginia Orienteering Club or through the Heart of Virginia Council. And at the end of this video, I'll have a picture of my contact information. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you're enjoying your camporee, the stay away camporee through Heart of Virginia Council. Thanks.